Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Nice. OK. Um, so good morning. Yeah, it's really great to be here today. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about the classic champagne problem uh, that most of the successful mobile apps in the world are going to face with somewhere in the half lifetime. Um, it's me and all of you. And it's called scale. Why champagne problem, you ask? Just because we are not going to cry about the idea that there is new thousand users that download our application. Um, but sometimes we need to think different. We need to think about how to change the, the, the way that we work in our day to day. Um, because at the beginning, it was pretty easy and super fast. We had a small company, great team, all of us in the same room. We probably work on the same repo. Um, we are able to manage our, our day to day work that develop me, the development and new feature uh, do, not, do not interfere for other team. Um, but from day to day, you start to realize that you are growing and things got much more complicated. Um, as your company grows, your app grows, you want more features, uh, more developers join to the teams, um, and it's indeed become much more difficult to build a React Native application with a simple project architecture. The build breaks more frequently, it became impossible to work on a single repo. Um, I have to admit that it's much more complicated with React Native just because the idea that we are working on three different environments. Me on my computer, there is visual code for the JavaScript. We have Android Studio, Xcode. Now we have to deal with NPM that we all, all of us, of course, like, and as well as with Graden and Gradle and Maven. Now we even need to use CocoaPod because I, uh, React Native put it into the into the framework. You, you just start to feel that it's actually affect your app performance. Your startup time is increased dramatically, screens load much slower, and it's much more difficult to test the code just because everyone breaks other, other, other team's features. There is a huge mess. So if all of this seems familiar to you, congratulations. It's a sign that your app just hit scale. So hello again, I'm Rumui, I'm from Tel Aviv. Uh, I originally came from iOS background, but today I'm mostly about React Native. I'm mostly focused on performance and architecture of the Wix application. Uh, and today I'm currently leading the mobile group uh, in the company. Today in my talk, I'm going to give you a brief overview about the history, about the story about Wix application, define together with you the problem we had, and how we solve them, and give you some secret sauce for a big scale application. And at the end, we're going to discuss whether it worked for us or I'm just wasting time. Uh, so stick with me. So if you are not familiar with Wix, Wix is a company to create a stunning website and manage your business. And with, with Wix mobile application, you actually manage your sites and, and your business on the go. Let's take an example. If you have a restaurant, you can go to the website, create in a few seconds on a website, and immediately start getting reservation uh, on your mobile phone, reserve a table, uh, get orders, send invoices to the user. Another example, you have a yoga class. Uh, you can create a website or not and create services and your members can book a service from the mobile. Um, well, we started our mobile journey with Wix back in 2015. To be honest, we took a chance with React Native. Uh, a, a big time. I mean, it was super promising around four, four or five years ago, and we decided to go for it. Today, we are a huge app. We have more than 600 different screens. We release two versions every week, actually four because it's two iOS and two Android. We are more than 90 mobile developers. Most of them came from web background, not the native, not mobile, and they're spread over 20 different teams. I want to start with a brief overview of our problem. Like my friends Charles like to say, a problem well stated is a problem health solved. Um, we need to dive in. Let's talk about scale. I try to define it in two sentences. Let's see if it's work. Scale is the ability to grow without compromising on development velocity and to increase the velocity without compromising on the product quality. We understand the problem. The problem is that you want too much. You want to eat all the cake. 
It's actually it's not working together. Raw, velocity, quality. In other words, we want to be able to increase uh, our team's members and release more features, but all of this without affecting time to production. Um, if you want all of this to be fast, it's double trouble because it's going to be a nightmare. So let's take a look about simple React Native application, create from scratch, um, and we need to understand if it's possible to work with this kind of architecture with a big scale. So at the bottom, we have the native SDK, nothing to do with React Native. At the top level, we have um, JavaScript and React. This is actually where most of our code is, um, is it's put, we put all of our code in there, all the screen, all the business logic. Um, at the middle, we have the React Native framework. It includes all the iOS, Java, and the infrastructure of JavaScript code. And if we decided suddenly that we want to create or use another uh, library from our own, let's say I want to create a QR code scanner to my application, so I need to use another library. Uh, we call it React Native Library with Native Library. It includes both, again, JavaScript, native, um, iOS, and Android. And then we left with the JavaScript libraries, uh, where every 10 years um, kid can put his malicious code and put it in our application. You all know. Um, this is the architecture of every simple application of React Native. Most of the time, this is the problem, all of these dependencies, all of these entities are in the same repo. And it's pretty hard to maintain this repo with 100 developers. All of us working on the same repo. Um, I can change the iOS code for another team, can break his feature. Um, now, a lot of people will say that we can move the JavaScript logic outside, separate them into different libraries, and then they can be dependency of the main repository. But let me tell you something. Uh, it's something that we try, and it's even worse. Why worse? Because it's make you work on a different environment uh, from production. Let's say I have my own example project. It has different dependencies from the main application. The main application of Wix, for example, let's go to the store. And what about native dependencies? What about the dependencies it has in the main application? It's a hell. For us, it was a chaos. So I want to try to count the issues with you. We saw that we have a slow development cycle. Uh, we had to build every time the whole native project, just even we change a small line of code in JavaScript. Uh, we have the owner, owner, owner issues. We are working on the same repo. We don't put ownership by files, just by project, so there is no well-defined ownership for each feature. Uh, we tried repo, mono repo. It's the same uh, because we, when we try to split it into mono repo or, or, or dedicated repos for each project, uh, it didn't help. It became much more complicated because then we need to integrate it between two libraries that they are isolated from each other. Um, Look on production, we call it dependencies hell. It's just what, what I talked about. If I have a project that is not the same like the production environment, the app that go to the store, it's, it's, it doesn't work. Test the code uh, became a nightmare. I test the code today, it works. Suddenly, I want to ship it to production. No code change. There is no code change in my repository. It suddenly stopped work. After a few hours, I, I'm sure all of you face with it. After a few hours of investigation, you suddenly realize that it was a dependency of dependency that someone changed and released last night and broke my application. Um, we can use F uh, NPM lock, but it's not working. Um, so we need to change the architecture of the application. Ah, OK, React Native Upgrade. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. It's impossible to take in one repository with 100 people and to decide suddenly to upgrade React Native, it, for us it was a freeze of three weeks uh, that we didn't release any application to the store, and we had to change it. So, how we do it? How we take application for 160 million users and make the development velocity much faster? When you design an architecture, it should fit your organization structure. In weeks, we divide it into such entities, not, not so different from other companies, we just call them companies. 
You can think about company as a small isolated team uh, that's work like a startup in two weeks. Uh, we have the week's, uh, the week's store, the week's blog, the week's chat. Each one of them has its own developer, product manager, and UI. Um, and they work isolated from each other, no connection between them. In addition, we have the pro professional entities it's called guild. Um, we have the server guild, the fed guild, and of course the mobile guild. Um, so the idea uh, behind the structure is to make sure that we all able to move quickly and complete the other um, companies to use small companies to achieve the same uh, goal, one mobile application. So in terms of goal, I try to translate our issues to goals. Um, I want to achieve an independent development. Um, each one of the team want to ship his new feature as soon as possible to production, uh, but important to say, with the same infrastructure. I want them to be in the same application. Um, Wix is a web-oriented uh, company. Like most of the companies, uh, we need to take it into account. I want web developers to start develop to my app without OpenX code. No need to know how to run Gradle, Maven scripts. Just go into the repo and write JavaScript. Uh, independent deployment, um, and as much as possible, uh, as much as possible to production. Um, same as web. It's not that common in mobile, but I want to release a feature and send it to production. Uh, we run fast, more fast than before. Um, we want the same dev production environment, um, and we want to try to create something like OS and application, like Chrome extension to Chrome, and like application to OS. We want to s do the same just for Wix mobile application. So back to our simple application, it's not really possible to achieve all the dreams. It's like you can think about all the iOS application in the world work on the same repo or on the same project and ship together to the store. It's impossible. So the key for success uh, is called separation of concerns. Separation of concerns, in the back end, the server guys call it microservices. In front end, they have something that's called micro front end. The separation can be in different ways. It can be vertically by feature. It can be horizontally by layers server or JavaScript and iOS and Android, each one of them can be in different teams, but we decided to mix and match between all of this variation. So let's start to change our entities and make sure that it works. First, I want to split the higher level. The higher level, the JavaScript and React, all the JavaScript code. Well, actually, most of the code is written in JavaScript. It's not making sense to put all of them in the, same, in the single project. So the first split is by infrastructure and product business logic. Um, they're probably developed by different teams. There is team to create the infra and all the rest making the product. Now let's concentrate in the production size, uh, side. Um, as I told you before, we split it into companies, some different teams that each one of them has a different product. Each group wants to work independently. So let's split them. We created something that's called module. What is module? We currently have in application more than 35 models, if I'm not wrong. Um, it means that it's um, around 20, 30 teams, that each team has its own model of models. Model is written, model is actually a mini Wix application inside the app. Um, you can think about it as an application in iOS or in Android. Um, model written only with JavaScript, which means the team doesn't need to hire any native development, um, any native uh, developers. Uh, it's a huge advantage for us. Um, models um, can, of course, uh, communicate with, with each other. Uh, even though they implemented in different logic, we have tons of integration between them, between the teams. Um, each model should uh, actually in include or implement the interface, which is the contract with the outside world, with, uh, with the other teams. Um, so this was the model. This was the product side. And now we're done with the product teams. Let's focus on the left side. So we took all of these parts. We have the infra JavaScript, uh, which include the infrastructure of the app, we have native framework, and all the native libraries. Native libraries, if you remember, should be inside the iOS and Android uh, project. And we put them into a new kind of entity, it's a new repo, 
we call it the engine. So let's do, take a look much deeper what is the engine. The engine is um, actually the, the, the entry point of the application. When the app opens, the first line of code is the app.js of the engine. Um, it provides the infrastructure to all the models. Uh, what is infrastructure? That they can focus on writing their screens, the logic, to talk with the product manager. We, in the infra side, pack, uh, pack all the infra and put it into a single repo. The engine, as you saw, includes all the native dependencies. Uh, it's important for the next bullet. Um, this is actually the most important part of, the, of, the, of my talk. The engine in, includes the iOS and Android binaries. Um, this actually um, makes JavaScript code isolated from the, from the main project. Um, why, if, if, we ha if we know what is the native code and the native dependencies, why can't we build it uh, in a head and then take the JavaScript code and just inject it into the project? No need to build ever, ever again all the native projects. Um, the engine is the one that loads the models with a config file. We'll so see it in a, in a minute. Um, it holds all the infra like push notification handling, error handling, network localization, accessibility, even fetching. We swizzle in the fetch, and we want to see if each, each model make a fetch and how much take, time it takes, and if there is any bottlenecks uh, to analyze the performance. Um, again, you, you need to think about an OS, not about the application, but we created an infrastructure for other applications to come in. So for me, it's easy because the structure of Wix is, is, making, is like a different company, but you can think about your company and actually, each company has different product teams, and each product teams want to do it isolated from the others. Um, so it's a huge advantage. Um, and the engine, it's much important. Most of the company is like this, but not, not the same. But the infrastructure developed by a single infrastructure team. This team includes native uh, developers, strong ones, uh, and it's not necessarily have uh, native development in the teams. They can be the web. Um, so back to other architecture, what we left with, we left with the code sharing, with the JavaScript libraries. JavaScript libraries can be common code between models. If you want to share the same logic, it's JavaScript, you can do it. It can be common code between the mobile and the web, because most of the teams have full stack developers that work both on the mobile application and the web. So you can put all the logic, business logic in JavaScript libraries, and they use it both on the web and the mobile. And mobile stores, if possible, why not? By the way, we are uh, um, a big fans of um, open source in Wix. As a rule of thumb, um, every Wix non-related code should be open source. From the first commit, um, meaning everything that is not business logic, but something that is Wixy, should be open source. Because working with scale in React Native at Wix, um, we will like to share our knowledge with the community. Uh, one good example is the UILib, React Native UILib. It's a mobile design library and UI library. Um, it's make us to use consistent UI and UX and improve the velocity by far from creating each one or use the React Native um, components without the design. And we have weekly releases. You can use it. It's open source. Back to our game. So that's all. Um, that was the origin, original structure of a small application, and we changed it. We created a new entity. Leverage, leveraging Wix organization structure, we opened the application to many teams. You can see they have models, the engine, and JavaScript libraries. It's, on one hand, give all the developers freedom, on one hand, and unified product, UI, and infrastructure for all of them. All of them has the same functionality of push notification, all the developers in the company it can be 100, it can be 1,000. They have the same infrastructure for everything. Localization, no need to implement it uh, by their own. Now we have new entities, how they play together. Let's drill in. In fact, it's, it, it's super interesting. Our main app repository that's released to Google Play and Store is just a config file. This config file, as you all know, it's called package.json. Um, it has all the list of dependencies, 
um, not the native one. It has two kind of dependencies. One is the engine. The second is all the modules. Um, it doesn't contain any line of code. So this configuration file first loads the engine, and it passes all the list of modules to be loaded by the engine. Now the engine knows which module to load. So this is the first interaction between engine and the model. The engine is taking the list and turning it into the memory. And now we left with the JavaScript library. JavaScript library can be a dependency or by the model or by the engine. It depends. If it's a moment to load it, it can be dependency of the engine because all of us use it. But if a dependency that, for example, can be shared code between uh, uh, the, the chat team that use the same code for web, web and the mobile, it can be dependency of a model. So the biggest change that we did is to take the pre-built native images, that's most of the application, put it into the main repo, and move it into um, outside, into a different project. Um, this, if, if it's all of it seems similar, it's a concept that's similar to Expo. Do you, someone is familiar with Expo? Maybe you develop an on-site Expo. We, we want to create an Expo solution tailored specifically for Wix. Uh, you are a developer, not have to be a native developer, but you can write your code into application without open Xcode, without open Android Studio. It's, it's amazing. And it means that all the model developers have the same environment. They can take their own config, we will see it in a minute, put the engine only with their own model. I want to test my code isolated from the others. Uh, it saves time that I build the project, the native project, and, and ship it to NPM package, and then the model take it and just run the project. To understand it better, let's see how model look like. Um, so model include a source file, the source folder, which include all the screens, all the business logic, uh, the resources folder, images and stuff, test if you want. Actually, the modules run E2E -E test uh, with detox in our case, and um, on the same native project that's run on production. So I just take the application, put my code, and test it. And it has module.js. Module.js is actually what I told you that the module need to implement an interface. The interface with the outside world, with other modules, or actually with, with the engine. It has two kind of um, functions. One is declaration. Declaration can be a prefix, uh, the, the, the init function, uh, which method I expose outside, services, deep links, because the engine gets, for example, push notification. I want to know who, who is the models need to take this push notification, handle it, and open the screen. And the other side, we have the lifecycle events. Actually, the init should be there. Um, What's happening in login? Do you want to do something when the, the user log into the application? Maybe to the, when we uh, log out with the, from the application, maybe you want to clear your cache, and all the rest, there is a lot of them. Um, and we have the package JSON. The package JSON includes dependencies, only JavaScript dependencies, as, as we talked about before, and that dependency is the engine. So why the engine? Just because. I don't have any example project. I don't have any iOS on Android folder, as you see, but I need to run the native application somehow. So we put it in dev dependency. Why not dependency? Because the one that brings the engine is the main repository. We'll see it in a minute. And so now it means that this package JSON load the config file and load the engine with all the native libraries, the same like in production. And with my own model, if I have any JavaScript libraries, perfect. Now, what if I have an integration with a different team? So I simply can add a new model from the out of, uh, outside uh, my own team, and then I can use both of them. So in production, we have 35, almost, uh, almost 40 models. Uh, if I want to run my end-to-end -end or test my code, no need to take all of the models and, and break my code. I just want to test my isolated area. Um, so how development process of a model developer, he writes his code, he push it to, to Git. Uh, we use TMCT, building the testing, testing only on his model. 
and then publish a version to NPM. At the second that is published uh, to NPM and tag this, um, ta this model as GA, uh, we use GA like it's ready to production. Your, his code can be in production in seconds, in minutes. Next time I release the, 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 the version, um, same like in the web. So, what about the engine? The engine is actually the main point, is included Android code, the iOS code. This is the project themselves. Um, it has the source code. The source code is all the JavaScript code. As I told you, it's all the infrastructure. It's specification, all the rest, written in JavaScript. Uh, it all, before we go into the package.json, it's all the APK and the app itself. All the native application, again, is inside the engine. And what's uh, the package.json include? The package.json includes all the native dependencies, uh, all loaded, for example, because you want all of the models to use the same version. Um, we release the engine every two or three weeks, uh, not like the model, which can publish a new version every day or twice a day. Um, we saw it like, um, like a major version. We can break the models. Uh, we, it can be a minor fix. It can be optimization of performance, some, something like React Native Upgrade, because now it's much easier. If I want to upgrade my React Native application, most of the job here is to change the engine, change the native libraries, all, everything is great, and then I'm releasing a new engine. So the Wix app repo includes just package.json. It includes the engine. Um, and all the models, if I have a new models, there is a new team in Twix, let's say blog, or I have a new uh, team that's called Achievement that wants to put his own um, mini, we, mini application in Twix, just add a new line, implement the model JS, put his screen, and it works out of the box. Now, communication between the models, um, they talk with each other, okay, but all of, the, all of it is through the engine. Does just before we want uh, control about all of going into the in, in, inside the application, so um, it's it's there is no direct communication between two models. You don't require other modules and call his function. It's all by the API the, by the model JS. Um, we have contract validation. It's much more scalable just because I can listen to the interaction between models. I can understand if there is someone then spam by broadcast, all the application and, and the JavaScript thread is, uh, is higher the, the normal way. Uh, we analyze this thing, but both on dev and both on production. We have BI, what is the most uh, popular interaction between them. <laughs> Super important. Uh, again, it's like Android and iOS do to our application. Um, they analyze everything. And we have full level of communication. You saw it in the package JSON as a clue. We have components. Each module exposes components outside. Components can be a screen or just a component. Uh, they expose methods. They expose events, like a broadcast. I want to broadcast everyone something. Let's say I have, for example, a module that's called notification. Notification module is the list of notification, like Facebook, Twitter. We have the same tweaks. And if someone click on notification, I want to broadcast everything, notification is read. So this kind of should be uh, a broadcast. And service is something different. It's like broadcast to everything, to, to everyone something, and they want the result. Let's say I have uh, anyone want something, and they five of them return me an answer. So it's different from broadcast than pops up. So it's full level of communication. So that's all. We cover a lot. Uh, it takes time to understand all of it, but I promise you, believe me, it's work. Um, you can watch the video afterward and, and read blog posts on Twitter and you realize that it's much more, uh, uh, it, it, it works much better uh, than a small, simple application. It's not necessarily relevant to your app, but sometime in the, life, life, uh, the app lifetime, you're gonna change, the, change your mind how, how you develop React Native application. So that brings us to the end of the presentation and for the big question. Does it really work for us? So yes, it works. In terms of goal, we achieve all of them. We got independent development. Each one do it by separate from the other. We actually have much more web developers than mobile developers, uh, and they can use 
their own expertise to create their features. We run fast, as I say, we can actually have the ability to release version to production every day, twice a day. There is no problem with no dependency on anyone and identical dev production environment just because the idea that we put the APK in the app in the outside project and the modules take it and open the same application like an OS on an app. What else? We have easier React Native application. I talked about it. It's much easier to change the code in the native. Clear API between the teams, much more scalable. And we have different release process. I'm not going to elaborate it today but because it's a huge subject. But actually, if I have native development shoot by the App Store or the Play Store, the JavaScript shouldn't be through this same channel. It can be by different channel. Modules can send directly the code into production, into the user phone. If just like the code push, if you are familiar with, it's something similar. We just send the JavaScript code directly to production. With that, we achieve totally web experience. You do something, ship it to production. Test it, you can change it in a minute. We have almost the biggest React Native project in the world. We have, there is Microsoft and Facebook, and we have tons of developers. We have developers in two different countries, 20 groups and growing. Most of our code is written in JavaScript. Uh, just only 30% is native. Um, almost all of the code, 80% of it, is shared between iOS and Android. Um, we have millions of active users, and, and it works. Thank you.